After the end of World War II, the United States continued its nuclear weapons research in the bowels of the secret laboratories of Los Alamos, New Mexico. Then, in less than a year of research, in 1945 and 1946, a plutonium charge weighing just over 6 kilograms killed two prominent physicists and radically changed the way experiments with nuclear weapons components were conducted. Pulling the Sleeping Dragon's Tail On August 21, 1945, just a week before Japan surrendered and World War II ended, while the world and the people of the Land of the Rising Sun were still reeling from the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, scientists at a secret research complex near Los Alamos continued to conduct nuclear weapons research. In one of the laboratories there was a plutonium sphere 9 cm in diameter and weighing 6.2 kg, consisting of two hemispheres coated with nickel. It was originally planned to be used for a third bombardment of Japan in the event that its surrender did not occur. Although the radioactive sphere was no longer needed for military use, scientists and researchers at Los Alamos were allowed to continue testing the object to improve existing designs. When a nuclear charge explodes, its core first goes into a supercritical state and a chain reaction begins within it, releasing enormous amounts of energy. Researchers knew how such reactions could be triggered, additional explosives were used to help the nucleus reach critical mass in the bombs dropped on Japanese cities. But scientists wanted to know more about the moment at which the nucleus goes into a critical state. One way this could be done was to cover the nucleus with neutron reflecting materials so that they would be reflected back until the nucleus began to go into a critical state. Exactly such an experiment was conducted on the night of August 21, 1945. Incident number 1 The renowned physicist Harry Daglian was conducting research on the plutonium nucleus alone, he was accompanied by one guard in the laboratory. To construct a reflective shield around the nucleus, he used blocks of tungsten carbide. As each new block was added, the assembly got closer and closer to a critical state. While installing another block, Daglian accidentally dropped it on the plutonium, which immediately put the sphere in a supercritical state. The assembly was enveloped in a blue glow, to stop the reaction Daglian instantly threw off the excess assembly and disassembled part of the reflector. In doing so, he received an extremely high dose of radiation, about 8 sieverts, soon after which he fell into a coma and passed away 25 days later from radiation sickness. The guard's exposure to radiation was much less, having received a radiation dose of 0.2 sieverts, he lived to be 62 years old. Simulation of the 1945 incident The plutonium balloon is surrounded by tungsten carbide reflector blocks. After the 1945 incident that killed one of the world's best physicists, the plutonium sphere, formerly called Rufus, became known as the Demon Core. Then safety guidelines for working with dangerous objects were rewritten and tightened, such experiments were forbidden to be conducted alone, and the development of remotely operated manipulators began. Daglin's colleagues continued research using the core, already without incident, until May 21, 1946. Incident number two. World War II had long since ended, but the U.S. was on the verge of the Cold War and needed to expand its nuclear capability. Louis Slotin, a 36-year-old Canadian physicist who had previously worked on the Manhattan Project, became one of the leading researchers working with the demon nucleus. He was incredibly confident, after all, when it came to handling dangerous quantities of plutonium, he was the most experienced man in the world. Zlatan regulated the reflection of core neutrons with beryllium domes as reflectors. Having placed the demon nucleus in one beryllium hemisphere, Zlatan partially covered it with another, and regulated the size of the gap with a flat screwdriver. It was a very dangerous and low-tech procedure, which caused great apprehension among the scientists' colleagues and was called pulling the dragon's tail because of the high risk. However, Zlatan paid no attention to anyone's warnings, as he had already conducted such experiments at least ten times. Suddenly the screwdriver holding the top of the sphere slipped and the reflectors closed, immediately bringing the assembly to a supercritical state. The blue glow reappeared around the assembly and all the participants in the room instantly received different doses of radiation. They were saved by the fact that Zlatan almost immediately tore off the upper reflector and knocked it to the floor, stopping the reaction. He received a lethal dose of radiation of about 1000 rads in less than a second. 
A Recreation of the 1946 Incident The plutonium is hidden under a reflector hemisphere held by a screwdriver. Immediately after the incident, Zlatan arranged all of his colleagues where they were at the time of the accident and drew a diagram of their positions on the blackboard so that doctors could then determine their exposure levels. According to Reimer Schreiber, one of Zlatan's colleagues, he remained calm after the accident. He remembered Daglian and already knew what would happen to him next. The disposition of the experiment participants during the May 21, 1946 accident at Los Alamos. While waiting for the medics to arrive, Zlatan told a colleague, you'll be all right. But I don't stand a chance. And that was true. The other participants of the experiment managed to survive. The physicist himself left this world nine days after the incident in the laboratory. Ironically, both of these horrific events occurred on a Tuesday, and both on the 21st day of the month. It is said that the two physicists were even in the same hospital room during their last days. On July 1, 1946, the plutonium ball of the Demon Core was finally used in a nuclear test. Detonation of a nuclear charge using the Demon Core on July 1, 1946. Subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends. Give it a thumbs up. Write in the comments about what else interesting you can tell about this video. See you in the new video.